There are two beautiful eyes looking at us, and what are they? This is Castor's solar system, approximately 50 light years away from our sun, and is a solar system that is quite important in mythology and in astronomy. Now let's talk more about this because this solar system is actually very unusual. Welcome to What the Math. <laughs> And we're using Space Engine and Universe Sandbox 2 today to explore this pretty interesting solar system. So if I were to turn around right now and look behind me, I would actually realize that there's another star in here. So Castor is actually a really, really, really complex multi-star system. So there's one right here. If I were to approach it, and this is actually called Castor CA, if I were to slowly approach it, I would realize that Castor CA is actually two stars. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? There's actually two eyes inside of that one eye. And both of these are red dwarfs and they're orbiting around each other um, relatively fast. So here I'm going to accelerate this. Uh, their orbit is less than a day apart. So this is actually a binary star within another major uh, uh, star system. In other words, Castor is actually a really, really complex star. So we're going to move away from these two and let's go back to those two eyes. So these are actually much brighter than the Castor C. This is Castor A and Castor B. And these is, this is actually what you can kind of see in the night sky if you have binoculars or if you have a really powerful telescope. Um, we've known about this binary star, or actually we thought it was a binary star for, at first, for quite a long time. And, and the first observation was in um, 17th and 8th, 18th century by Cassini and James Pound. Uh, now, they thought it was a binary star, but now we know that it's not, because if I were to approach, this is actually, um, what is, is this Castor A? I think it's Castor A. And if I were to approach Castor A, this is what you would see again. So it's a very, very bright star, but it, once again, it's actually a binary star. If you look really close, you'll see that there is actually a red dwarf called Castor AB orbiting a much larger white uh, sequence star called Castor AA. And this one is actually really, really bright. So bright, in fact, that I need to dim it a little bit for us to see it. And so you can kind of see, where's the other guy? Here he is. Uh, you can kind of see uh, Castor AB orbiting Castor AA. And uh, once again here, the actual orbit is just over a day. So they actually orbit relatively fast around each other. And now we're going to go to the last uh, um, star, and this is Castor B. And if you've already possibly guessed, uh, Castor B is also a binary star. And we're approaching it right now, and close your eyes, it's going to get really, really bright. Here we go. Here, here they are. Castor B A and Castor B B. So these guys are also orbiting each other. So this star system is really complex. There's at least six stars here, so you could call it a, a hexenary star system, I guess. Um, and uh, what's really interesting is that we have no idea how it's uh, you know staying so stable. Uh, we also don't really know much about in, uh, planets or anything else uh, that orbits around the system, but we know it has a Berry Center, which is actually what I was uh, near in the beginning. So if I were to go to... Alright, so let's go to the Berry Center, and I think it's somewhere around here. So right around here, uh, this is the location around which all of these three stars, including Castor C, are orbiting. Uh, or it's actually quite possible that Castor C is orbiting these two large stars. Um, and uh, it's kind of estimated that the orbit of this star around these two two bright stars is uh, several thousand years. So we'll probably never really see how long it actually takes for them to orbit each other. But they seem to have a relatively stable orbit. And it's really interesting because let's go to Universe Sandbox 2 and let's actually try to, um, try to create this. Let's actually see if we can make this really complex six star system that essentially has a stable orbit around each other. And luckily for us, there's actually already a simulation called Caster Six Star Simulation uh, or Caster Six Star System that we can click on to create this beautiful Caster system. Look at that, it's already pre-made. And so we're going to explore this a little bit and try to possibly place something that we can then terraform or even create some sort of livable system in this multiple star system here. 
But before we do that, let's actually talk about the importance of caster as this is what it looks like from a distance. Caster system as um, in terms of mythology and basically why we actually even care about this particular star. Now let's look at these two stars. So one of them is called Pollux and one of them is called Caster. These two are known as companion stars in mythology and in many cultures they're actually always um, observed together because if you look in the night sky you see them really close together. Now Castor has six stars inside but Pollux is just one large star that actually has an exoplanet and, and uh, it's actually a gas giant that's a little bit more massive than Jupiter and as you can see here it's beautiful but it's also stimulantly hot. Now anyway, so Pollux and Castor, they're known for uh, or known in various mythological stories um, around the world and even in China, these two are essentially the representation of Yin and Yang, Yin being Castor and Yang being Pollux. While in Greek mythology, Castor and, and Pollux are actually twin brothers and Pollux is uh, uh, an immortal, he's a son of Zeus, while Castor is a mortal and he's a son of King of Sparta. But both of these characters in the Greek mythology share the same mother and the mother's name is Queen Leda. So in many cultures these two are actually twins or they were presented in some, some kind of a twin fashion and even early Christians uh, called them David and Jonathan. So basically in many cultures they were known as the twin stars. But we're not going to be talking about Pollux today and we're actually going to just focus on Castor. So let's zoom in on Castor. And what we're going to do is, well, first of all, in this simulation, there already is an exoplanet orbiting around each of these um, binary stars. And if we zoom in here, this is what it looks like. Their orbits are relatively fast and one star is uh, much more massive than the other star. So there's a sort of a red uh, dwarf here and a white uh, sequence star. But this extra solar planet that you can see orbiting around it, this is just a very hypothetical uh, object. We don't really know if these exist. And one of the previous videos I showed you that it's almost impossible to place a stable um, planetary system around a binary star that orbits so fast around each other. So you'll see that these extra solar planets that we have here, they're actually going to slingshot out of these systems in, in a relatively quick uh, time. And basically they won't be able to survive in this system for a very long time because uh, the gravitational forces here will cause them to slowly slingshot out of this. Even though this looks so beautiful, this will not last for very long. But also let's look at um, uh, the actual temperature that these three planets will get. So there's three exoplanets, A, B and C. And uh, they all start at a relatively close temperature to Earth. These are actually, if you look at them, if you freeze this, you'll see that this is actually a version of Earth. So this one doesn't look like Earth yet, but I believe if we look at uh, Castor B's exoplanet, you'll you'll see that there's actually an sort of a Earth-like continent on the surface. Now we don't really see the continents yet, but you'll see them really soon uh, because there's actually quite a lot of water here. It's a lot more water than our Earth has, so this is why you don't really see this. Now uh, I will not be able to accelerate this too much because if I do accelerate the simulation. Um, the due to the way the um, orbits are calculated, a lot of these stars will actually fly uh, away from each other and they won't be able to orbit anymore. So we're just going to increase this simulation really, really gently by maybe a few days. Uh, here we go. So let's hope that they don't fly away yet. And so the actual stars are in a very stable orbit around each other, uh, but these planets will not be. Uh, they will actually most likely fly away from each other. So um, some of the regions where you could potentially have planetary bodies are obviously very, very close to the actual star. So literally, like, let me just slow down this for a second. Uh, literally, if I were to place a, a, an actual, here, let's just place a random exoplanet right here. This is probably one of the more uh, possible locations for, for a planet. But the problem, of course, is that this... There you go. There it goes. It flies away right away. This will make this planet ridiculously hot. So if I were to pause this for one second and zoom in on it... Where is it? Here it is. Uh, this planet is currently 5000 degrees Kelvin. That is way too hot for us. So we're, we're not going to be able to have that planet here. So let's erase it. 
Um, this extra planet, uh, um, extra solar planet, is already too hot as well, because um, Caster B is a really hot star, and this planet got a little bit too close to it. And you'll see it actually slingshotting out of this system really soon. But remember when I mentioned it looked like Earth? Look at that. See Africa? So this is technically Earth, but just very, very hot with no water left on it. So uh, maintaining a planetary system around these individual stars is close to impossible because a binary star like like these, uh, like the ones you see here, will not maintain um, a stable system. And so this Earth is slowly going to cool down and fly out as well. And then we have another Earth around Castor C. And even though it looks pretty stable right now, as, uh, if we wait a few years, it will most likely fly away as well. Uh, there is, however, a, a spot where you could potentially have planets, and that's, that spot is the Berry Center. Um, just like in our solar system, you can actually have something orbiting the Berry Center in this circular fashion. Now, in this game, I tried really hard to cre recreate that, but it's so difficult. But we're going to try this again. I'm going to place an object right in the middle of the berry center and hope for the best that it actually orbits i need to actually make it still at first and i think somewhere around here and we're going to give it just a little bit of speed now i don't know if this is going to be stable or not because it's kind of difficult to make this a stable uh, orbit around the berry center but it's very very likely that it's going to fly away what what i am interested in however is trying to make it terraformed now, can we actually achieve that? Well, all six stars are really far away from us. Uh, we're going to just take a look at how much heat we're getting from these stars. And I don't know if this is even enough. Um, it's kind of a little bit more than what Pluto gets, I guess. But let's see if we can maybe turn this into something. So let's give it a lot of uh, atmosphere. And let's hope for the best. So the greenhouse effect here is going to be really ridiculously high. And we're just going. We're just going to wait and see if this is, uh, if we can actually possibly terraform this planet called Kepler 55e. Let's just call it Castor. Castor Home. This is our home world. It's going. It's going to be called Castor Home. Um, and while Castor Home is staying here, uh, it's basically, um, or hypothetically, theoretically, would possibly be able to orbit around the Berry Center. And so um, these six stars might actually have stuff orbiting here. And if this stuff is a planet, it will be pretty awesome because, well, first of all, if you were to look into the sky, I'll actually, let's make it spin a little bit because it's not spinning right now. So here we go. If we were to uh, stand on the surface and look into the sky, we would actually see not one, not two, but six separate stars. This would be pretty awesome. You would essentially never have night. Uh, it's sort of difficult to imagine and you don't really see it very well in this game, but imagine having six not so bright uh, but quite hot stars that are essentially always, always, always warming you up. Uh, now, to, for this planet to actually get terraformed, I do believe we need to have a very, very high pressure or basically a lot of greenhouse gases that will hopefully warm it up because it's just not getting enough heat from these six stars. They are quite far away from us and the distance here is something along the lines of, I think it's about 60, maybe 70 astronomical units. So it's actually farther away than Pluto and sort of uh, kind of like where Sedna is, uh, maybe a little bit closer than Sedna. Uh, so this is a pretty far, um, far away object. And it looks like I was able to stabilize this uh, this planet at a temperature of 18 degrees Celsius. So this is a pretty awesome terraform world. It's blue. It has oceans on the surface. I don't know if you can see them, but they're sort of right there. Uh, I may have to remove the atmosphere for us to see that. And here you go. So you can see there's liquid oceans, liquid water here. And we can have atmosphere and also um, clouds, of course. So this, this is a terraform world, uh, obviously because of the things like greenhouse gases and very, very high greenhouse effect of 237 degrees Celsius. Uh, and, but unfortunately, I wasn't really able to put it in a permanent orbit around Berry Center. It's actually really hard to find this sweet spot. Um, maybe you can try it yourself and see if you can actually make it orbit right around here, or around the edge. Uh, and also in this game, because uh, if you accelerate time, things will just go out, get out of control and things will start flying away. It's kind of difficult to um, 
to play with this particular simulation because you have to really advance time super slowly. So if I were to actually advance this really, really fast, so right now we're doing days per second, you'll see that things will start just separating and flying away. Uh, so even these two stars will not be as stable anymore. And there you go, they actually just flew away from each other and this this is no longer a stable system. So and the only way to make this stable is if you run a simulation really, really slow. But anyway, so I think I was able to kind of terraform this, uh, this sort of one planet called Caster Home, right in the middle of the Caster system. And I think the only real possibility for us to find any kind of planetary bodies or um, areas to visit and land on would be in the Barry Center. Um, if if the system has been around for a very long time, it would have quite a lot of things flying around here. If if Castor is a relatively young system, it would probably have almost nothing here, possibly even completely empty. But I guess we'll only find out about this in the future, one day when we actually have a spaceship that can travel for 51 light years in an instant. Maybe then we'll find out what's in the middle of Barry Center of Castor system. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this video and you learned a little bit about Castor um, and Pollux. And in the next video, we're going to explore some more stars and some more awesomeness in Universe Box 2 and also Space Engine. And let's just look at Castor system from this angle again, because this is the this is what it looks like from our planet as well. Now, hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please subscribe and like this video. And don't forget that this channel is not just about space games, it's about learning through video games. And don't forget to post your opinion on what do you think is inside the Barry Center right here? What can we actually find if we were to one day visit this location? Would we actually find something cool? or is it completely empty? What do you think? Post it in the comments below. Thank you guys and game you later. Bye-bye.